The people working over at 2K definitely know how to stir up drama. I mean, have you all seen the new trailer promoting 2K24 and how Jordan Poole called for an ISO with Draymond, then shot a three over his head? Sheesh, guys. Do y'all think Poole's going to try and reenact that when the two former teammates come head to head on Friday, December 22nd? <laughs> I mean, judging from his boxing videos, I bet he can't wait to see Draymond again. <laughs> In any case, ladies and gentlemen, the player ratings for 2K24 have recently been released. Some players are fine with their ratings, while some others are clearly outraged. Today, let's dive and see who's happy and who's not. 26 points, 7 assists, and 6 rebounds is what Jamal Murray averaged over the course of the 2023 NBA playoffs, while shooting 47% from the field, 40% from 3, and 93% at the line. Now, I ain't saying he's Kobe Bryant or anything outrageous like that, but you can't deny that the playoff numbers he just put up are actually very comparable to Kobe when he won back-to-back -back finals MVPs in 2009 and 2010. I mean, just look at it for a quick comparison. Kobe scored just a tad more, but Murray was far more efficient and also performed slightly better in the rebounding and assist departments. And yet, what were Kobe's numbers for 2K back in those days? 97 and 97. Good enough for being the best player in all of 2K. But uh, Jamal Murray? After putting up some mind-blowing finals MVP type of numbers, they gave him an overall score of 84. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? This should be on Shaq and a Fool. Well, when Murray caught wind of this, he stopped everything he was doing, turned to Twitter immediately, and wrote, Ain't no way my rating that low. How is that possible? Just for an FYI, a score of 84 would put him on the same level as players like Cade Cunningham, Jalen Green, Paulo Boncaro, and Tyler Harrow. For someone who is the second best player on a championship team, this isn't just crazy. This is madness. Eventually, 2K did change his ratings, but uh, it was only from an 84 to an 88. Murray then responded to this change by tweeting, Will you at least fix my jumper then? <laughs> 88 is better than 84, but am I right or am I right when I say it's still too low? But anyway, moving on here, let's see how the second overall pick in the 2023 NBA draft, Brandon Miller, responded to his 2K ratings. What's going on, y'all? It's Brandon Miller, the Charlotte Hornets. I'm um, here with the first reaction of my 2K rating. Uh, 78? <laughs> I'm close to 80, you know. They always do the rooks, you know, 70s or 80 and below. I'm cool with a 78. Miller seems to be happy. I mean, he got a 78, and 80 is about as high as rookies go, right? Well, I wonder if he recorded this video before Victor Wambanyama opened his ratings because... You want to show the people? I don't know yet. Oh, that's nice. That's all right. Yeah, you that's like that? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. right. 84. 84 is a rookie? Before he even played a single NBA minute? That's just as high as the original Jamal Murray rate. <laughs> oh, and when we're talking about rookies in general, Wemby has the highest rating by a rookie ever. Higher than Zion higher than AD, and higher even than a rookie LeBron James. Only time will tell if that was accurate or if the developers of 2K just made a big mistake. Anyway, one player who probably won't care too much about his 2K ratings is Klay Thompson of the Golden State Warriors. You see, last year Klay was really upset at the three-point rating he got from 2K, and rightly so. He's arguably the second best shooter in NBA history, but the developers of 2K last year decided to give him just an 88 in the category of long distance shooting. 
just for a quick FYI, when the season came to a conclusion, he ended up leading the league in three-pointers with 301 and also shot it at a 41% clip, which is elite, elite. Anyway, Clay eventually told them to put some respect on his name before calling them a bum. Well, Ronnie 2K, the director for 2K Games, eventually did a segment with ESPN about players and their ratings and said, Clay is a tremendous basketball player, mm. uh, one of my favorite guys to watch in the league. But one of the biggest things there is like he's, he was mad about having an 88 uh, rating in, in 2K. It's the current thing, right? So for, you know who he has to actually sort of blame is his own teammate, Stephen Curry. Because mm. for the last 10 years, outside of uh, Steph's injury year, um, you know, uh, he's shot consistently 10% more threes than everybody else. So at some point, the current day rating has to kind of attribute to that, right? Well, Clay eventually saw what Ronnie 2K had to say in that interview. And at this point in time, Clay clearly didn't like Ronnie and said, Y'all really interviewed this clown? I thought NBA on ESPN meant coverage of some of the best athletes in the world, not interviewing a promoter. Do better, ESPN. Well, when Ronnie saw that, he changed his Twitter profile picture to Clay's face and tweeted, rent free. And that sort of started a little fire. As the heart and soul of the Warriors, Draymond wasn't going to stay silent on his Warriors brethren. He quickly responded, Ronnie, you promote a video game, sir. Stop acting like the old media. To which Ronnie responded, Sorry, I don't have a stimulating podcast to put on this morning. Busy promoting a video game. To which Draymond again responded, You do realize your success is dependent upon us, right? Slow down, it can get ugly fast. Sheesh, guys. In hindsight, I bet Ronnie wished he just gave Clay a 90 instead. <laughs> but anyway, Ronnie eventually started an apology going outside Chase Center and inside with a huge poster saying, Clay, you're a 100 in my book. To which Clay responded, I would like to apologize to Ronnie 2K. I was in my feelings about a fictitious rating and I took out my anger on him with trolling in the comments. Cyberbullying is super lame and loser behavior and for that, I am sorry, bro. Well, that's the last we heard from Clay regarding 2K until recently when he was on the Paul George podcast. I had to retire from 2K lately, though. I'll get too angry. My brother really put me in retirement. I'll take that game way too serious. I'm like, he's not even that good. He right. shouldn't be this rating. And right. I'm like, what am I doing? Bro? I'm like, it's not that serious. <laughs> even up to last year when I'm beefing with Ronnie 2K about my shooting rating, and I had a coming to Jesus moment like, bro, I'm 32 years old, and I care about my 2K rating. God, please help me. Anyway, back to 2K24. You know who was happy about their ratings? Jimmy Buckets. Butler was a 95 on 2K, and as you can see from his reaction, he was quite pleased. I don't know you niggas no more. Hey, hey tell me that you're logging his mind so I can get all the 95 on 2K, guys. Scoot Henderson was also quite happy with his score of 78. Ooh. All these guys are watching. <laughs> okay, that, that ain't bad. Let's see. It. And he should be happy. I mean, he's already better than some solid vets who should be completely flabbergasted with their ratings. I'm talking specifically about Alex Caruso and Nicholas Batum. As vital role players for winning organizations, not everything they do shows up in the box scores, and thus they were given ratings of 76 and 74, which is lower than rookies who've never played a single NBA minute just yet. Then on the opposite end of that spectrum, some fans are wondering why LeBron James, who will be 39 years old next season, is tied at 96 with the likes of Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Embiid, and Giannis. He's still an elite player in the NBA, nobody's going to argue that, but 96? I believe a 94 rating for LeBron would have looked better. But moving on here, we got Ben Simmons next. Ben originally came into 2K with a 79 rating, and even went as high as 87 for a period of time, but because of his inactivity, he's now dropped to 76, which is lower than incoming rookies, and to be honest, even 76 is a bit high for him. Sheesh, guys, what a fall from grace. This is a former number one pick who was hyped to be the next LeBron James at one point. He's now lower than, uh, 
Ben Simmons is now lower than Dylan Dynasty Brooks in 2K. That's when you know your career is going downhill. <laughs>